Welcome back everyone. The time's come for me to bring in all of my tender plants. So in this week's video, I'm gonna show you how I overwinter my Ancesti bananas, my cannas, and my colocasias. But first, I need to change one experiment that I tried this year, which is this enormous Paulonia tomentosa tree. It looked absolutely incredible with its enormous leaves growing off this single stem. And this is just one year's growth, but they got ripped to shreds with the coastal winds. And I'd rather have plants that can stand up to it, like this roost tree, which is looking great in its autumn colors. I coppiced it early in the year to encourage these enormous leaves. And you can see last year's cut and the point from which it grew. And the thickness of the stem for one year's growth is absolutely bonkers. But I'm just not happy with it in the garden, so I'm going to remove this plant and start by cutting it down before I dig out the root ball. Well that's the cut made, and digging out the root ball wasn't too much work, but I didn't get it on camera because I needed two hands to do the job. I don't know what you think, but in my opinion the garden already looks so much better without this tatty, giant plant in the back corner. Right, on to protecting the tender plants. We'll start with the Ensetti banana. These really tropical looking plants are commonly called Ensetti banana, Abyssinian banana, Ethiopian banana or false banana. And they are just invaluable for a tropical garden style. But unfortunately, they can't take the wet and the cold here in the UK. So I'm gonna show you how I overwinter my Ensetti banana. Step one. Grab yourself a spade. You're gonna to need to dig out the root ball. The root ball on these plants is surprisingly small, which is why you can grow them quite large inside of a container. They just need to be kept moist throughout their growing season and you'll get great big leaves. So after a little bit of digging, I've managed to lift the plant and you'll see what I mean. The root ball is surprisingly small for such a big leafed plant. But I'm gonna overwinter this banana dry so I need to remove as much of this soil as possible because that will hold on to moisture and encourage rot which is definitely not what we want to happen. But the hardest thing you have to remove is the leaves because you've been trying so hard to grow them all year. We cut off this excess plant material because again it removes any extra moisture because we don't want the plant to rot. And you'll see it yourselves as soon as you make that first cut, water just starts oozing out from the stem. And you just wanna work your way up the plant, cutting the leaves back as tight as possible. Here's mine all done except one last leaf. I'm gonna enjoy it while I can because it's absolutely enormous, but it has to go. With that last leaf removed, it's now time to turn the banana upside down, but be careful when you do this. Water collects in the old leaf joints and it absolutely stinks because it goes stagnant. And you can see the drips of that disgusting water just running out of the banana now, which is great. We're trying to get it as dry as possible before we store it over winter. But while it's upside down and we've got the hose pipe at hand, it's time to remove that excess soil from the root ball. Now here's a little expert tip for you. Stand back, the mud goes everywhere. Be thorough, you want to get all of the soil away from the root ball, or at least as much as you can without damaging the plant. And with that done, I'm storing it outdoors to dry off in one of the more unglamorous corners of my garden. And I admit, this corner doesn't make it into the videos very often but this will allow the banana to dry as much as possible. And once it's as dry as it can be, I'll put it into a frost free environment over winter and keep it bone dry. Prepare the banana for winter, check. Now let me share with you how I store my elephant ears or colocasias over winter. Overwintering colocasias is very similar to overwintering the bananas. And I used this process last year and it worked a treat. So step one, same as before, remove the root ball. But be careful, the root on colocasias are different to that of bananas and they actually form a corm, which is similar to a bulb. 
This is where they store their energy ready for growth next year, so you don't want to damage it. And for certain species of this plant, this corm is edible, and you'll know it as taro in Asian food shops. And you can actually grow this plant from taro sold in those shops. So, with the plant lifted, I've shaken off as much soil as possible from the root ball, which was easier with the colocasia because it wasn't planted in such a wet, boggy spot. And you can see that energy storing corm at the bottom of the plant, and we just want to be careful not to damage this. And same as the banana. I'm going to cut the leaves off and store my colocasia corm dry. You can actually just lift your tender plants, pot them up and bring them indoors as house plants over winter. But my tiny garden comes with a tiny house, so I don't have the space to do it. So this is my preferred way. And again, once they've dried off, I just put them into the shed or any other frost free environment to keep them dry over winter. I'll keep checking them to make sure they're not rotting and I might sprinkle some sulfur powder over them as a fungicide just to help prevent rot. And overwintering canners for me is a slightly different process because I'm close to the coast I don't get hard frost that often but I do have wet heavy clay soil and the rhizomes tend to rot away. I know this because I experimented last year. I left half of the canners in the ground and lifted half, and the ones I lifted were so much happier and healthier. So I'm gonna do the same again. Here you can see a canner rhizome that I've lifted, and the rhizome, similar to the corn, is the canner's way of storing energy ready to grow the following year. And then I just squeeze as many of these canner rhizomes into a pot as I can. Again, Space is a premium for me, so I want to reduce the amount of pots I'm having to store over winter. And if you have limited space available as well, then this is a great way to save some space. The canners aren't going to grow over winter, you're just protecting the roots. And to do this, I just pack in some dry, multi-purpose compost. You can use something like perlite or grit or even sand. It's just an insulating barrier between the roots and potential cold air. And that's it for me. With the pot full, I'll then put this pot either into a shed or into a part of the garden that doesn't receive that much rain. And I'll bring it in if there's a threat of frost. Now it's worth me saying, there are so many different ways that you can overwinter tropical and exotic plants. And this is just the ways that work best for me in my space and in my location. If you are blessed enough to have an enormous greenhouse, then just dig up your plants, pot them up and keep them on the dry side through winter. And you might be able to keep the leaves and have a head start the next year. But if you're as tight on space as I am, then give some of my techniques a go and let me know how it gets on. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.